Good morning, Year 4. Here is your final maths lesson via video on Friday the 5th of March. I am sure you are going to be really glad when I'm back in class with you, uh, but I won't be able to say the phrases. You can pause here now and you can rewind it if you need more explanations. Um, so looking forward to listening uh, really well when we get back to school um, because I can't re rewind myself in person. But for your final maths today, we're looking at lesson six, which is multiplying three digit numbers by one digit numbers again. So the same as yesterday, still using that formal written method, but today we're gonna to be regrouping in the tens. Okay, let's get started then. So this is a calculation that we did yesterday. So this is where it regroups in the ones. Let's just remind ourselves how to do it. So this is 226 multiplied by three. So again, we start with our three, times by our six, which is 18. The eight goes in the ones and the one is beneath the tens column. Then we do three times two, which is six. And we add that one at the bottom, which is seven. And finally, we do three times two here in the hundreds column, which is six. Okay, the only difference that we're going to be doing today is where we regroup in the tens. So the ones column number will be a single digit, but the tens, which is the ones I colored in green, that, that will be where it needs to be regrouped. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, 151 times by six. So exactly the same message from Colin at the bottom. If the column product is equal to 10, we regroup it. And this time we'll write the tens digit somewhere and the hundreds digit somewhere else. Okay, so we start off just like always, the same technique. We do our six times by our one. So we're still doing our vertical first. And six times one is six. So single digit there today, um, no need to regroup at the moment. Next thing we do is we do our six multiplied by our five. So our tens, our first diagonal multiplication and six times five or five times six is 30. So this is where we need to regroup today. So because the answer is 30, our zero still goes first and we still regroup our three. So very, very similar. It's just because it's 50 times six because it's in the tens column. The answer would therefore be 300, but we're still using the terminology five times six and the answer being 30. Then finally, we do our six times by our one in our hundreds column. So six times one is six, but we need to add this three down here, which is nine. So the answer is 906. Hopefully that's not too complicated. It is very, very similar to what we were doing yesterday. Um, let's look at another one though. This time we have 262 multiplied by three. So again, we start off in our ones column, three times two. And again, just because I haven't mentioned it yet today, I've definitely lined up my hundreds, tens and ones column and the one is below the one. So I start with three times two, which is six. So it's a single digit in my ones column. Then I go on to do my three times my six. And again, you can do three sixes or six threes, it doesn't matter. So six, 12, 18, eight in that column in the tens and the one goes into the hundred. So it still reads as that 18. Then finally, we do our three and we multiply it by our two. So three times two is six add one more down here, which is seven. So our answer is 786. Okay, let's have a look at another. Seven times by 130. So again, just because it's written round that way, we still write the 130 above and the seven below. Okay, they are all lined up correctly. So I start with seven times zero. Seven lots of nothing is still nothing. Okay. Next one then, we do seven multiplied by three. And seven threes are 21. So the one and the two is carried over or regrouped. Then finally, we have our seven times by our one. And hopefully you can see the colors to show which one we do when. And seven times one is seven. 
add the two down here is nine. So our answer is 910. Brilliant, okay, one more then. 241 multiplied by four. So again, I've made sure I've lined up those numbers correctly and I'm starting again with my vertical four times one. And four times one is four. Simple enough, okay, next one in the color green, four times four. So four, eight, 12, 16, six and one. So six in that tens column and one goes into the hundreds. And then finally, in our blue color, we do four times two. And four times two is eight. Add one more down there is our nine. So the number is 964. Okay, hopefully you didn't find those too tricky and they are very, very similar to yesterday. It's just regrouping in that different column. If you would like to have a go at these, that would be brilliant. Please make sure you're using that formal written method and you are noticing today that all the regrouping is happening in that tens column. Good luck at those and we will be back in a moment to go through the answers. Okay then, so just before I get rid of it, we're just reminding ourselves that if the product is equal to 10 or more, so it's gonna be in that tens column today, then it's where we write our ones and tens digit. So first question was 231, and we are multiplying by four. So making sure my ones are lined up with the ones, and obviously the tens and hundreds columns don't line up anything else, but they go in the right place value and I've used my ruler for my lines. So then I start with four times one, which is four. Four times three, which is 12. So two in the tens, one in the hundreds. And then four times two is eight, add one more is nine. So the answer is 924. And if you got that answer right, please give yourself a tick. Okay, next one then, we have 362 and we are multiplying by three. Again, making sure I'm lining those numbers up correctly, using my ruler for my equals line, and then I get started in the ones column. So three times two is six. Three times six now is 18, so eight in that tens column and one to go in the hundreds. And then three times three is nine, add one more is 10. So what I can do here is write my zero first, pop my one below, then realize there's nothing to multiply by and the one just goes back in that column. So our answer is 1,086. And if you got that one right, please give yourself a tick. Okay, I'm just gonna scroll down, give us a bit more room. Next one then, seven times 181, still gonna write the 181 first, and we're multiplying it by seven. Still making sure they're lined up correctly using my ruler and then starting off in that ones column. Seven times one is seven. Seven times eight, trickier one here, you can use your uh, multiplication grid if you need to, but the answer is 56. So six goes in my tens column and I'm regrouping that five and then five, sorry, seven times one is seven, add five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Again, the two in that column, you'd regroup there if needed, but because we're timing by nothing else, the one can just come straight up. So our answer is 1,267. And if you got that one right, please give yourself a tick. Okay, final one then, six, if something is equal to six times 140. Again, it doesn't matter the order. We still put our 140 at the top and we're multiplying by six. And we have our equals lines at the bottom with our ruler. And I'm just gonna move it down slightly in case there's any regrouping, because I think there will be. And then we start six lots of nothing is nothing. Any lots of nothing is nothing. Then six times four, six, 12, 18, 24. So the four in the tens, and we're regrouping our two. And then six times one is six, add two more is eight. So then the answer is 840. 
And if you got that one right, please give yourself a tick. Okay, don't worry at all if you found the middle two tricky just because there was that extra digit um, and it went into the thousands. If you've got them right there, that's brilliant. Um, and if you need to pause um, and rewind me, this is the last time you can do that. So you're more than welcome to do that here. Um, if not, let's have a look at Emmett's problem. Okay, Emmett thinks that 241 times by four is 844. Explain why he is correct. So if you want to pause and have a go yourself, you're welcome to. If not, we'll discuss it together. OK, let's see what he's done then. So the first thing we need to do is four times by one, which I agree is four. Brilliant. Then we do four times six. And four times six, six, twelve, eighteen is 24. So the four I agree with. Ah, but this is where he hasn't regrouped and he hasn't put his number two down there. Because then when he does his final four times two, the answer is eight, but he needed to add on the two that he missed off. So maybe you can give the correct answer. Okay, your task today then, there are five do it questions, very similar. They will all regroup in that tens column today. Just make sure you do that formal written method and that you make sure you line up your numbers correctly and use a ruler for your equals lines. Then you've got your go deep Coco problem. Coco has made a mistake. Explain why she is incorrect and give me the right answer would be brilliant. And finally, your go deeper today. Coco is multiplying a three digit number by a one digit number and the answer is 486. All of the digits of the two numbers are different. Find at least two possible pairs of numbers. So you're going to need to be doing a calculation where you're writing the three digit and the one digit number where the answer is 486. Huge, huge good luck with that one. Um, I hope you find everything OK. Um, if not, you can always rewind the video again one last time um, to show how to do some of the calculations. And just remember to come back at the end for the learning pit. Off you go. OK, huge, huge well done with that. And I must say a huge well done for all of the math that you have completed at home or in Key Workers with Mrs. Um, Chamberlain watching the videos for the last two months. Can you please finally pop a learning pit on your work today to show where you feel you are with this learning? How did you feel when you were multiplying three digit and one digit numbers when we were regrouping in the tens? Doesn't matter where you say you are, um, as long as it reflects how you actually feel. And I know that we'll be um, helping you again in person when we are back next week. Again, so I'm so, so impressed with all of the maths work that you've done. Um, I hope you have a brilliant weekend um, after you've done the other lessons today and I will see you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>